Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Uda. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhina mustafa la siyama al-mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. My dear viewers, allow me to remind you with our contact informations and where you can watch us live. Beginning with the phone numbers, area code 002, then 023-855-131. Alternatively, area code 002, then 0100-546-9323. And we have also two WhatsApp numbers to make it easy for you to give us a free call, area code 001-347-806-0025. And finally, area code 001-361-489-1503. Uh, we have some callers on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ahmed from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Uda. Brother Ahmed. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's, it's uh, me from before when I called regarding the psychology and um, the subjects at school. Okay, go ahead. And... From last time. Uh, yeah, so I was going to ask, is it permissible for me to be able to have, uh, um, by the way, I have three questions. Well, this is my first question. Uh, <laughs> okay. Is it, is, it, is, is it permissible for me to have uh, a, a non-Muslim tutor to teach me? Non-Muslim teachers? Yes, it is permissible. If they have something Two, to tutor, teach. Like one, like uh, one to one. One on one and teacher. they can come to my house. One on one teacher, provided. Whether a Muslim or a Muslim or a non-Muslim, <laughs> I'm not allowed to sit alone with a woman who is not mahram to me. No, 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 no woman, just a man, man. Okay, a man coming to teach me, no problem. Even one on one. Alhamdulillah. Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you, Sheikh. And my second question is uh, regarding, I had the conversation of an uh, individual in which they said, if someone is knowledgeable, and they can use their own logic in uh, the Quran and their own understanding in the Quran and that it shouldn't be limited to the way of the Salaf, the Salih. And I said in response that uh, they, 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 these are the three favorite generations that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, uh, uh, spoke about. And I said that they're gonna know, their understanding of the religion will be much, much better than now. And I, I said we can't use our own logic in religion. Can you please like um, cl clarify the importance of uh, um, the way of the Salaf and Salih and, and the understanding of the Salaf that they had and how we can't compare them to us? And my third question mm. in Tayyimum uh, is it, is it, do we, do we have to wipe the whole entire face or is just wipe insufficient? All right, got your questions, Ahmed. We answer one, remaining two. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jamal from the USA, welcome to Ask with a Brother. Jamal, go ahead. So, like, yeah, um, I had a couple questions. True. Um, my first question was... Jamal, are you still on the line? Okay, let's take another caller. Hazim from India. Assalamu alaikum, brother Hazim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Uda, brother Hazim. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question that what are my responsibilities uh, as a brother, as a son, as a citizen of the society? As a brother, as a son? And as a citizen of the society, or you can say a country, my duties and responsibilities. Uh, you mean as a citizen? Yeah. Right. Got your questions. Hazim from India. Thank you so much. Do we have any other callers? Jamal from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Jamal. Yes, I. Yes, yeah. Sure. Naam, yeah, Jamal. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. So my first question was um. The, so the community center, the masjid that we pray at, it's just the new new building that we just uh, they just like took a like the first thing that is um, rent we have to first uh, contract we're in a contract with the place the people that own the place um, so 
one one of the one of the brothers that's uh he's he's putting down the money and and um he ha he has to go through a bank and Well, I guess I still got your question. I'm kind of familiar with these conditions. Inshallah, I will answer you, Jamal. Brother Muhammad from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to Ask Huda, Muhammad. Go ahead. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. And you? Fine, Jack. Alhamdulillah. I have two questions, Sheikh. Please go ahead. My first question, Sheikh, is, uh, Sheikh, uh, today I prayed Isha in the Masjid today. Uh, so be before I was uh, going to say my Takbir at Akram, I saw the Imam that he was holding a phone and he was reading the Quran. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard from Sheikh Asim that it, this is not permissible. So I didn't know what to do, so I, f I joined the congregation. You and said, so my question you is, said he was making a mistake in the Quran? He was reading the Quran check in the, in the phone, in the Easter prayer. Oh, he was reading of the phone in the uh, Fard prayer, okay? Yes, Sheikh. Okay, any other questions? And my second question, Sheikh, is Sheikh, in Islam, how do you, if you want to get married, how do you get to know the girl, Sheikh, her personality? If you want to get married, all right, got your questions, Muhammad from the Philippines. Our brother Ahmed from the KSA is next on the line. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Brother Ahmed, how are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Were you able to make Umrah nowadays? Nowadays, uh, it's very hard that you have to like go to program, you have to apply for it. There, there are certain rules about it, but, but it is allowed for many people are going and doing Umrah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make it easy for us to go back to his house. So Ahmed, what is your question today? Uh, I have two questions. That One question is that there is a hadith which says uh, worship that we can't worship in graveyard and the uh, washroom. And why you want to worship in the, in, in the washroom, Ahmed? I don't want to worship there. My question is that if we go to some our relative grave, it is graveyard, so we can uh, make dua or not there. You see, there is a difference between worship in general and between offering the prayers or supplication. So in the graveyard, you're allowed to pray for the deceased. That's in the hadith. Assalamu alaikum ahla diyari min al mu'minin wa al muslimin. Nasalu Allah lana wa lakum al afiyah. Wa inna insha'Allah bikum la hiqoon. So we pray for the dead people, not to the dead people. We ask the Almighty Allah to pardon them, to have mercy on them. We don't ask from them. And in order to avoid any possibility of confusing the issues, the Prophet ﷺ totally forbade offering namaz or the prayers, salah, in the graveyard. Except when you pray salatul janaza, if the person has been already buried while facing the qibla. Okay? As far as the bathroom, the washroom, whenever the person is uncovered, answering the call of nature, you're not allowed to talk, you're not allowed particularly to mention any zikr or supplication. Barakallah feek, Ahmed. Uh, we had Ahmed. Sarah, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa how are you doing, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. Would you please raise your voice a little bit, Sarah? Yeah, yes, Shaykh, can you hear me now? Now, yes, I can. Um, I had two questions, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Uh, my first question is, um, some in my family believe if you put salt in the corners of the rooms, this will keep away the jinn and the shaitan. I wanted to ask if this is real or this is something not part of the religion. 
Okay. And my second question is, um, if there's someone suffering from major depression and they're taking medicine and they're doing treatment for it, does this mean that they have weak Iman? Okay. Those are my questions. Um, no problem. Thank you, Sarah from Egypt. Nice questions. Assalamu alaikum. Zakaria from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. How are you and how is the whole country of Pakistan, Brother Zakaria? Alhamdulillah, everything is good in here, uh, in Pakistan. And uh, how are you, Sheikh? How are, uh, I miss eating biryani and kebab in Pakistan, but obviously not from the streets of Karachi. Go ahead, uh, uh, Zakaria, what is your question today? Um, if you want, Sheikh, I can bring it to you, if you want. <laughs> Delivery, you mean? It will take several hours. It will go bad. Jazakallah khairan. Anyway. Okay, that would be good either, either way. Yeah, thank you so much. Go ahead. Thank what is your question? Um, my question is that um, if you want to, you know, um, you are getting married okay. and your father wants you to do it on their decision, not your decision. First of all, let's use the first person, not the pronoun of the second person. Unless my wife will be listening and she says, Zakaria said that you're getting married. I'm not getting married. Okay, I'm cool. So your question is about yourself. Or a third person, somebody is getting married. Let's put it this way. So, okay. yeah, you want to get married and your father does not agree. Or he has a different yeah. view, right? That is your question, صح? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sister Aisha from Singapore. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my my question is: When we ladies sujud uh, in praying, is it okay if our palms for women does not have skin contact with the prayer mat? Means our palms are on the prayer mat, but is covered by a layer of cloth, which is our hijab. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I got your questions, Sister Aisha. Sorry, say again. I got your questions. Thank you. Brother Musa from India. Assalamu alaikum, Akhi Musa. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Go How ahead. Are you, Sheikh? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. My question is uh, I listen from uh, one uh, preacher that uh, we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dream. Is it true, Sheikh? This is my question. Okay. Got your question, Musa from India. Yes. Thank you so much. So, we'll take one more question before we put the calls on hold because we have plenty of questions, mashallah. Abu Bakr from France, how are you? Yeah, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr from France, you're on the line and you're live on Ask Kuda. Okay, let me tackle some of the questions by the time Abu Bakr gets back on the line. Ahmed from the UK. He said that he had two questions. The first, uh, three actually, I answered one. So the second question, he had an argument with somebody that we have knowledge and with our logic we can realize what is right and what is wrong and we can be judgmental of things and so on. We don't need to rely on the views of the earlier generations. And the person means by that, you know, whether the companions or at tabi'een and their followers and so on. But this comes in clear contradiction with the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. Because when he said that, yeah, people will be divided into many sects, many groups, and all of them will be astray except for one group, then the companions obviously asked him, who will be? Those people who would remain steadfast, maintaining new traditions, and will be representing the mainstream ummah. He said, those who will be following whatever I and my companions are 
doing today. So we find ourselves obliged to follow them in the religious matters. Okay? And that's why when you study fiqh, you say, like nowadays, in order to make any statement concerning the COVID-19, you say the World Health Organization said, or the Ministry of Health said. In the deen, you're going to say, the Prophet Sallallahu said, or any of the companions said in a sound hadith. So without them, basically there is no religion. So we're obliged to follow the guidance of the Prophet and his chosen companions whom Allah the Almighty praised and made them superior and chose them to be the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. مَنْ عَلَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمَ وَأَصْحَابِ Forget about the world which is annoying you. Stop calling them the predecessors or whatever. Just call them the companions and the followers and the followers of the followers. Isn't this what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? He said, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ أَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ أَلُونَهُمْ the best of people at large, my companions and the next generation and the next generation, which are known as Sahaba, Tabi'een, and Tabi'i at Tabi'een. And I explained before the meaning of each one of those terms. At Tayammum, you know, by striking your hand against the dust, the clean dust, the pure sand or dust, and wiping your hands, then another one, and wiping over your face. Right? That's it. That is tamum. With the intention from the beginning, you're doing tamum instead of uh, making wudu because of lack of water, because of inability of using water, and so on. Hazim from India. Um, what do I owe others as a son, as a brother, as a citizen of the country? Well, one hadith, one hadith answers all those questions. The hadith is narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal and Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. May Allah be pleased with both of them. And it's a sound hadith. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ أَتْبِعَ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُوقٍ حَسَنٍ Fear Allah and keep your duty to Him wherever you may be at. In India, in Mecca, in New York City, in China, you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim everywhere. You're God-fearing everywhere. Follow the evil deed with one which is good. It shall erase it everywhere. خَالِقِ النَّاسَ Be well-mannered with all people, relatives, and those who are not related to you. Neighbors who are not you, and those who are not your neighbors. Muslims and non-Muslims as well. So Allah the Almighty instructed us that this religion after Tawheed establish on good manners. I have been sent exclusively to perfect good manners. So as a son, you owe being dutiful to the parents. And uh, the Quran stated right after Tawheed and worshiping Allah alone, being dutiful to one's parents. And the Prophet Sallallahu considered that being undutiful to one's parents is an easy path to hellfire. May Allah protect us against that. And as a brother, Imam Muslim collected some hadith about the rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim, seven rights, including whenever he sneezes, he does tashmeet, whenever he falls sick, he visits him and following the funeral and uh, replying to their salam, checking on them, exchanging gifts, and so on and so forth. As a citizen, you should be loyal to the place in which you live and as long as it doesn't instruct you to do anything that displeases the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jamal from the USA, he said basically we're renting a place, we're offering the prayer in it. So some brother decided that we need to buy it. So he put some down payment and the rest will be with mortgage. Mortgage isn't permissible whether to buy a house or to pay for a masjid. The community should get together, even if they can just buy a small place, or they keep hiring or renting a place where they offer the congregational prayers and whole Sunday school and getting together until they have some enough fund that they can build a masjid or do a fundraise. Now a fundraise, you don't have to travel abroad. Show the people that you have a community and you're willing to put 30%, 40%. You raise enough fund and we need people to support you. You will get it. 
when you're sincere, inshallah. But we shouldn't invest in the masjid through usury and interest. Um, Muhammad from the Philippines, he entered the masjid and the Imam was leading the prayer and reading from the phone. Well, there is a difference of opinion when it comes to uh, reciting from the open Quran in the farther prayer. And the more correct view that you shouldn't be doing that. In the Nafila, the vast majority of the scholars, with the exception of Imam Abu Hanifa, said it's permissible. But in the fard prayer, you should recite whatever you have memorized. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Ummul Qawma Aqra'uhum. Let the person who lead the prayer should be the one who knows more Quran. Uh, Ahmad, we answer your questions about worship in the grave. Sarah, Sister Sarah, said, is it permissible or is it okay to, I think she said that some relatives do that. They spray salt in the corners of the house to prevent the jinn. Again, if it is something related to the deen and to the worship, I'm going to ask him, ask whom? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with a fingertip, I can find out whether the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do that or not. He has never done so. Neither or any of the companions or tabi'ins. What is the story of soul to protect against the jinn or to kick them out? This is some of the Egyptian traditions which have nothing to do with their deen. And if I do it with the intention of warding of the jinn, that's not permissible. That's an act of innovation. Because we know what words of the jinn and keep them out of the house. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whenever you enter your house, you say, Bismillah! So Satan will say to his party, to his offspring, to his host, we don't have lodging here tonight. If he forgets, he would say, congratulations. We guarantee to lodge here tonight. Then again at dinner, if the person forgets to say, Bismillah, he says, Satan says to his party, and we guarantee to have dinner here tonight. So simply say, Bismillah, when you or any of your family members enter the house. Do not keep pictures hanging here and there and statues at home. Then shayateen will not enter. But if you keep it, then shayateen are hanging around in the house and the angels will not enter. Every now and then, you or any of the family members recite Surah Al-Baqarah at home. The Prophet said in the hadith, if you recite Surah Al-Baqarah entirely in one house, no Satan will dare to enter this house for three days. Not salt, rather the Quran. Um Sana from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Umm Sana. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Take uh, only one question, please. I, other than uh, Surah Surah Kahaf, I, I, I try to finish uh, one Surah, surah Bakra every Friday. I don't know if I'm doing something bidda or is it okay? Uh, I would appreciate, I, I I would appreciate if you can repeat your question almost now. Bakra will help us, uh, will be one of the lights on the day of. Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to know if this is right. Jazakillah Thank you so much. You yeah. know, you know what happened, why I was distracted? Because I just remember that, um, may Allah bless him, Dr. Zakir, he phoned me the other day and he said, Muhammad, there is a good opportunity to cover the whole of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, the whole Indian subcontinent. And you need to reach out to more people there. I said, how? So he has guided me to the Util Sat 20. And I'm doing my best, inshallah, Azzajal, to go live on this satellite, um, Intelsat. It's called Intelsat 20. So, brothers and sisters, you know, this is an opportunity for people who want to invest with the Almighty Allah. If you like this program, and if you like our programs, then share the reward. We need to send the channel all over India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and most of Europe, insha'Allah azzajal. So, I would like somebody to commit maybe a thousand dollars per month, fifteen hundred dollars, more or less, and you specify this is to sponsor the Intelsat. And before Allah, I promise, that will be directed, insha'Allah, towards the satellite. Al-Waqfu ala niyat al-Waqf, insha'Allah azzajal will do that. I, I personally think, this is an opportunity I'm presenting to you. Anyone would like to share their word of sending our broadcast all over the Indian subcontinent, 
and many European countries live, then this is an opportunity. I already gave him the okay. I said, we will, inshallah, even though I don't have a penny for that. But I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know a lot of people will be willing to invest. You can inbox me, you can phone me, you have our bank account, but provided you say this is a sponsorship for the satellite until Sat 20, so that inshallah people in this part of the world will be able to watch us live at the convenience of their homes, inshallah. Share their word and spread the word. Assalamu alaikum. Hajra from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Hajra, go ahead, sister Hajra. Okay, my question is, uh, I someone said is about to say, uh, I need when someone say a prayer to you. And uh, my other question is, well, I didn't get the first question praying. to begin with. Okay, okay. Go ahead and uh, would you please repeat your first question again? My first question is, um, when someone say a prayer to you and you said, Ami, someone said it's bad to, to say Ami to the people. Okay, second question. Okay, second question is, when you are praying and you're doing, um, you're saying your, can you still go ahead and continue your prayer or when you finish, um, can you do, before you do salama, can you do um, probably before you do salama because you forgot to say I mean when you finish saying your fatia. Okay. Sister Hajara, I want to ask a question. Hajara? Nam. Okay. How are you watching us right now? Is it on satellite, the Nigerian satellite or on your phone? Oh, no, on my phone. I had to pause because I'm having double words, so I had to pause the okay. live review, uh, show. Okay, but you know that we are live on the Nigerian set as well. Yes, I don't have that on my dish. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sister Hajra from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umu Adi from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Ummu Adib, go ahead. Yes. I have a question regarding uh, inheritance. Okay. Okay, one of our relatives passed away. The husband and wife, they didn't have children. Mm -hmm. But they had adopted a son mm. who, is, who is married and he has children as well. Mm. Now this, the... The lady who has passed away, she had some jewelry, which when during her lifetime she used to say that this is for uh, the adopted son's children. Mm. She used to tell with her relatives. And the relatives have all agreed upon to just forego their inheritance, which they would inherit, inherit from the deceased person. Mm -hmm. uh, so now this jewelry, now the children of that adopted uh, son are minors. Mm. So all this jewelry will be under the custody of her sisters and all. So is this jewelry or whatever is there, is it liable for uh, zaka? And who should pay the zaka? Should the inheritors pay or uh, is it the one who is going to be on whom the wasiya is written? Okay, yeah. thank you, respected sister. Before I go for a show break, yeah. this is important to tackle so that the viewers know that we have a question concerning the inheritance. A family adopted a child. So whenever any of them die, the adopted child doesn't have any share of the inheritance. And that's why as a person and can write up to one third of my wealth as a wasiyah, to the adopted child or to his children or to anyone as long as they are not among the official ears. Now when somebody inherits somebody and there is a guardian or a custodian and I have the position, then in this case I should pay zakah on that. Why? Because Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anh said, you should invest in the wealth of the orphans lest the zakah will devour it. So that means there is zakah due on that 
after one complete year, lunar year, of receiving the wasiya or the wealth from the inheritance. I think Sister Sarah asked earlier about uh, if somebody is suffering from depression and being treated, is this a sign that he doesn't have a good relationship with Allah? Not at all. Okay? Or, let me be more correct, not necessarily. Okay? Because this could be purely clinical deficiency of the serotonin or whatever in the brain which requires medical attention. The sheikh is not going to answer this question. If it requires medical attention, the person may be got feeding and everything, but he has some clinical uh, disease that needs to be looked at and taken care of medically. On the other hand, there is somebody who is in depression, but is not clinically, but because he doesn't pray. He doesn't read Quran. So Allah says, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ His life will be miserable. Not because he's having deficiency in whatever uh, substance in the brain or clinical, clinical uh, disease. It's simply because the person distanced himself from Allah, so Allah distanced him from his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah. In a couple of minutes, hang around. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back inshallah. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Let me quickly remind you with our phone numbers which should appear on the bottom of the screen, area code 001-347-806-0025. That is a WhatsApp number, another number, area code 001-361-489-1503. We also have the landlines, area code 002, then 1 and finally, I code 002, then 0238551331. Before I take any calls or answer any of the pending questions, I, uh, I need a favor from all of you. As you know that it is the haqq, the right of a Muslim upon the rest of Muslims to pray for them. One of our very dear friends, somebody whom Allah knows that he's very helpful to the entire Muslim community in the USA. Uh, he had a surgery and he needs your prayers. Okay, so you can make dua for him. His name is Haj Mustafa. May the Almighty Allah grant him a full recovery and make him better than before, inshallah, so that he will continue serving Allah and serving the entire Muslim community, whether in the States or worldwide. So include Haj Mustafa in your prayer and say, As'alullah al-Azim, Rabb al-Ash al-Azim, an yashfiyahu shifa'an la yugaduru saqama, and we pray for all Muslims who are suffering. May Allah alleviate their pains. Now, I am Sister Ayam. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Ayam from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, okay. That's Brother Ayam. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Ayam. I, I hear you. You're live on Askoda. What is your question, brother? Um. I have uh, two questions. Uh, my first, my first question is: Is is it permissible to wear Nike because it was named after a Greek goddess? Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, why do like the religious people in Saudi Arabia now wear the agal on their head? They wear what? Why do the religious people in Saudi Arabia now wear the agal? They wear the agal on their head. Yeah. Okay, we need to present a question to them. Um, I don't wear a gun, so uh, I, my, maybe this is their cultural traditions. Okay, I got your questions. Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I also. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is dual citizenship permissible? Like one citizenship of a Muslim country and one citizenship? Well, as long as you obtain it legally, I am, it is permissible. As long as you obtain the citizenship legally, then it is permissible. So the Canadian, the American, the British citizenship, as long as you obtain it legally without lying, then it is permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Bakr from France. Assalamu alaikum, Abu Bakr. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Sheikh. 
Welcome I to the have, program. Uh, uh, I can say an advice, requesting an advice from you. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Can you hear me, Sheikh? Yes, I can. Yeah, I am, uh, I am almost ending my PhD research, and uh, during the trajectory, I went to a lot of troubles with one of my pro uh, professors. Now I realize uh, the professors did a lot of plots against me to the other professors in writing my articles. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, as a Muslim, even though the guy is not a Muslim, but I don't know if it's fair to ask Allah to judge what the guy did to me, even if I forgive him, but I realize he plotted a lot against me, and sometimes uh, he went to say many things to other professors. Yeah. But Abu Bakr, did you, uh, yeah. did you already get the challenge your thesis? Did you already graduate or not yet? Not yet. I am almost. I am almost at the end. And is it still hurting you? Uh, not, not now. One year left, he, he, he totally uh, changed. He's not hurting me anymore. Okay. But, 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 but the more I thought about what he did to me, the more I realized I was very lucky and then asking Allah a lot for help because Good. the other pro professors is a joint project between the, the Dutch people and the French people. Mm -hmm. So the, prof the other professors, they didn't tell me exactly uh, or openly what the guy said to them, but you know, the more I work with them, the more I realized what he, he said against me. And then I, I, I am very lucky that I am almost done with my papers, I mean articles. So I will be publishing them very soon, inshallah. I will, I'm yeah. also asking May you Allah to grant you success, Abu Bakr. Next, Assalamu Alaikum. Nazreen from India, Assalamu Alaikum. Nazreen. Nazreen. Yeah, Assalamu Alaikum, please. Wa Alaikum, Assalamu Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Go ahead, Nazreen. You're live on Ask Oda. Okay. Uh, I have two questions, and they are both. They are not re related with each other. Okay. My first question is uh, regarding Vitar Salah. When you do Vitar Namaz, uh, we do Dwai Tunus in the third part. So, can we do it if, uh, like uh, uh, getting up after the Ruku? Like you go, you do the third Salah, you do uh, Ruku, and then you. Do. Got your question, Nazreen from, from India. Ruku. Do you have another question? Yes. What is your second question, please? Is it? Second question is regarding to my son. He is eight years old and he is quite mysterious. It's okay to be mysterious, I know, but sometimes he troubles me a lot regarding education wise. He gets, uh, he is really difficult to read and write. I try to do it and, and, and the same thing in, uh, in this uh, uh, while reading Quran Street as well. He gives me really trouble. Like, how should I deal with this thing? And because whenever he does something wrong, I am blamed about it. How should I deal with it? It, it really troubled me a lot. All right. Thank you, uh, Sister Nazreen from India. Assalamu alaikum. Daniel from the USA. Brother Daniel, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are, how are you? I'm doing just fine. How about yourself, Daniel? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Which state are you calling from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I love that state. Go ahead. My question is uh, as follows. What, what is the ruling on keeping and talking to jinn? To okay. have jinn keep it talking. Okay. Got your question. Do you have another one? No, that, that's all. All right. Thank you. Quickly, for a person to communicate with the jinn, then the person is required to do a lot of bad stuff which may take him out of the fold of the deen. In fact, the Quran talks about the nature of the relationship between the humans in general and the jinn kind. So Allah the Almighty says, So the jinn Satan and all the jinn kind, they can see us and we cannot see them. And the jinn, the non-Muslim jinns, happen to be enemies to the believers. So when a person is trying to communicate with them, they need to do certain procedures to declare this, this, this belief. And in subhanallah, 
And our prayers will say, we'll see a cliff he wrote, Allah against al jinnati wal nas. Those who whisper in the hearts and the minds of people, particularly from the jinn. Okay? And Allah the Almighty says in Surah Fussilat and He says in Surah Al Araf, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ So I would definitely ask you not to attempt to do that. Daniel from the USA. Abu Bakr from France. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah. You are a pardoning person and this is a sign of having a good heart. Allah the Almighty may forgive that person who have wronged others whenever others or those who have been wronged pardon and forgive. But the problem is not with forgiving and pardoning, you know, oppressing other people only. It's also about belief when a person meets Allah the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. While rejecting his oneness, his existence, and being the only Lord who is worthy of worship, then he runs out of chances. He does not stand a chance to enter paradise. So Abu Bakr, include him in your dua. May Allah guide him to the deen. Um, Salam alaikum. Hamadu from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa sheikh. How are you doing, sir? Alhamdulillah. Hamadu, welcome to Ask Oda. Go ahead, akhi. Um, sheikh, the question I have is, um, if, uh, if I, I didn't pray um, Safi Witri, I was leaving it to pray my um, Tagit at night. So, unfortunately, I slept off. I wasn't able to pray it. So, how could I have my, my Safi Witri? What, what what was the prayer? Aisha prayer, Fajr prayer, which prayer was it? Um, no, I want to pray uh, like night prayer. So night I, prayer. I, sometimes when I pray in Shah, yeah, in night okay, prayer, if I pray in okay. Shah, I don't pray my Safil Rotary. So I leave it till in, uh, in the like night, night time, maybe well, around 3 a.m. Um, so Ummu Minin, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, answered your question. She said that if the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, overslept because he was so tired, sick, or troubling, and he didn't pray his word of the night prayer of Tahajjud, he used to make it up after sunrise and between Dhuhr, between this time and until Dhuhr. But in the case of the Witcher prayer, he wouldn't pray one. He would pray it even, because the witr is only for the night time. So let's say that you are planning to pray three rakas, witr, make them four. Oh, well, I used to pray eight rakas, two by two, then I pray witr, then you're going to make them ten, not nine, or twelve, not eleven. And you pray them fifteen minutes after sunrise, all the way until fifteen minutes before dhuhr. Thank you, Hamadu from the Gambia. Uh, Sister Ramiza from India. Hello? Yes, Sister Ramiza, you're live on Ask Oda. Go ahead. Oh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brother. Wa I have three questions. Can I ask three or only one is mm, Go ahead. No problem. Go ahead. Okay, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Actually, what is the ruling for the gold? Actually, uh, some says we have to give every year. Some says only once we have to give and that's it. And that is my first question. Second uh, question is regarding the names of the baby. Azel, A I Z E L. Is it okay? A okay. Next. Okay. So I, I got actually two of your questions. Uh, Insha'Allah Azza Jal. Um, I am from Canada. Any name brand. As long as they wear, it doesn't mean something bad. It doesn't refer to any something haram. Or it is not a company that they promote illicit relationship. Or they present or they pose any enmity to Islam and Muslims. Or support through the funding that I buy their t-shirt and they dedicate an amount of that to support our enemies. Then it's halal to wear it. Whether it's made by Muslims or non-Muslims, it doesn't matter. But, and that's why I don't want to speak about a particular name brand or a particular company. When I know that those guys who are making fun of Islam or Muslims or the Quran, whatever, and portraying in some of their products something against Islam and Muslims, then it's haram to buy from them. I know for sure, for sure, not rumors, that they dedicate some of their fund to support our enemies then it's haram to support them and give them money out of that. There is plenty of name brands. 
and we're 1.8 billion Muslims who can affect any economy on earth when we say we ain't buying from you guys we ain't buying your products that's it we killed them we don't want to do that unless if they push us to do that we're nice we're super nice with everyone لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين as long as they're cool to us we're cool with them we're kind to them but they turn around they stab us from the back they hurt our brothers and sisters they insult our messenger or Islam I'm not giving you anything supposedly okay uh Nazreen from India making Qunut in the Uttar prayer before or after Rukuah. Both are permissible. And the Prophet ﷺ did both. So you can do this or that. Even though the most common is after bound down, after rising up from Rukuah. But you still can make it uh, before bound down after you finish your recitation. Her son is eight and he's given her a hard time in education. You know, my experience with people from the Indian subcontinent, they're very keen about making their children the best in math, in science, in, in English. This is very good, but this is not the end of life. Take it easy. Let's say that in your condition, your son is having some uh, difficulty in studying and learning. It could be because he needs some psychological attention from a professional or it could be you know when some people they, they have a child who's constantly crying not because he's hungry or sick but maybe because of the evil eye so they need ruqya how often do you recite ruqya upon your son sister do it on daily basis you know how to do it i explained that before so when you put your hand on him and you recite at al kursi surat al fatiha and the three calls are on muawwidat this is a great ruqya and pray for him in your sujood, inshallah, may Allah make it easy for him. Ramiza from India, uh, what is the more correct view in respect of paying zakah on jewelry? If you, um, you know, if you have jewelry which is zakatable, then the more correct view is to pay zakah on every single year, annually. And this is the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy. Uh, on him. Sister uh, Umu Sinan from the KSA, she recites Surat Al-Baqarah along with Surat Al-Kahf every Friday. No problem. As a matter of fact, the Prophet Sallallahu advised that we should recite it once every three days. So if this is what you can do and if this is your day off where you have a chance to recite it, MashaAllah, may Allah accept. Hajira from Nigeria saying Ameen. Whether you are the person who supplicated or an audience, it's okay to say Ameen. And if an audience heard you make a supplication and said Ameen, then he or she will be similar to you exactly in making the dua. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah said to Moses and Aaron, that's okay. Allah has accepted your dua. Your dua has been answered. Even though in the previous ayah, the one who supplicated was Moses alone. But Harun said, Ameen. So it's like both of them made the dua. So when I make dua by myself as well, and I finish and I say, Ameen, it is okay, which means Allahumma stajib, oh Allah accept. What is the proof? In the salah, when I say, Ihdina surat al mustaqim. This is a dua. I ask Allah to guide us to the straight path. And when I finish, I say, Ameen. They deny. Oh Allah, accept. Accept this dua. Whether you're the Imam or the Ma'moom, you're praying in congregation or you're praying uh, by yourself. Uh, Musa from India, I think that is the last question. Oh, we have Zakari as well. He says, is it possible to see Allah in your dream? It is possible. Yet. When you hear a message, this is from Allah. When you hear the circumstances in your dream, Allah is telling you a message. But whoever you saw in dream is not physically Allah because Allah says in Surah Al-Shura, Ayah number 11, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ You can never visualize him. And our most beloved Prophet Muhammad was asked, 
Did you see Allah during the journey of Al-Mi'raj? He said, Nurun, anna ara, he's Nur. How could I see him? Okay? Which means he didn't see him. But I received a message in a dream, some sort of inspiration. Even if I saw a human being, or if I saw any object, and the message sounds from Allah, this is a message from Allah. But what you saw isn't physically Allah. Zakaria said, uh, Zakaria said uh, that he wants to get married or a man wants to get married but his father opposes him. Look, the guardianship is a must or the consent of the guardian is compulsory in the case of the girl getting married. So her marriage without the okay of the guardian, the father or whoever is in order is a must. For a man, it is not a must. Yet, who wants to get married without making his parents happy? A mother or a father? His family happy? Maybe they have uh, a view. They have a wise season. But if you happen to find the right person, and you know that your family, they object to her because she's from a poor family or whatever, or they have somebody else in mind, and she's a religious person, and she's a good person, and she's the person whom you love, Bismillah, go ahead and get married, and try to reconcile with your parents. In the prayer, sisters, you got to keep your hands and face uncovered. Um, we ran out of time, actually. We have many, many questions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us for our shortcomings and forgive us all. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته